and we are live. Hello, everyone out there on Facebook. It is Thursday, the 30th of April. I always have to say that because I'm losing track of time with all of these crazy times. Um, hi, guys. Danelle Dixon, Performance Plus Physical Therapy. And I have a very, very, very special guest, um, a friend of mine, Dr. Olivia Robertson. He is a chiropractor that works downtown DC. And I'm so happy to have him here today. We are going to be talking about our different perspectives in terms of how we deal with spinal patients. So welcome, Dr. Robinson. How are you? Yes, thank you. I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. I'm so glad that you can join us. So um, for those guys who um, may not be aware of um, or be aware of Dr. Robinson, I'm going to have him give him give him a brief introduction to himself so he can orient you guys to who he is and who he works with. And I'll do the same. Over to you, Dr. Robinson. Sure. Well, my background is very pretty diverse. I started out with uh, you know, working 10 years in the military on submarines. And after I left uh, the military, I decided to I was actually on my way to medical school mm -hmm. and when I had a turn of events and I uh, was treated by a chiropractor and I actually became a chiropractor. Um, mm -hmm. So during that time, I was always um, very active in sports and I figured that I needed something more than just traditional chiropractic. And so once becoming a chiropractor, I incorporated a lot of modalities and therapies into my office and uh, treat a lot of athletic um, people. So. Awesome. And you are located downtown DC, correct? That's correct. Awesome. And how long have you been practicing? Um, this is my 20th year. This year is my 20th year of practicing. Can wow. <laughs> wow. I, I can imagine time probably flew by so quickly. Oh, yeah. Wow. So guys, this is a very seasoned professional that has been helping people with their spines for a long time. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself for you guys who may not be aware, who just joined my page. My name is Danelle Dixon. My company is Performance Plus Physical Therapy, and I'm an orthopedic physical therapist. I work with sports. I work with orthopedics, and I do work extensively with performing artists, specifically dancers. Um, my background as a physical therapist um, I was also like Dr. Robinson, actually heading for medical school. And while I was dancing in New York City, got injured and was down for the count and was just really lost and had no idea of what my body did or how it works or how to heal it and encountered a physical therapist that helped me through that injury and was and allowed me to complete my training um, at that scholarship that I was at at New York City. And that is when my mind shifted, just like Dr. Robinson. I'm like, this is what I want to do in terms of helping people. So my practice, ironically, is just down the street from Dr. Robinson. And I just happened to meet him one fine day through um, a common friend. Um, so we I've been downtown DC um, for the past five going on six years. I've been in practice for about 15 years. So I'm a little bit younger than Dr. Dr. Robinson over there. Um, and again, I work with sports, um, very active population are the guys that I, um, I love working with um, that I help a lot. And I do work specifically with dancers also because that is my background. And that is what brought me into the physical therapy field. So. That's awesome. We have such similarities going on already. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So tell us a bit about how you help your patients with spinal conditions. So guys, we've been working on the spine. I've been going through Ask Dr. D for the past couple of weeks. And this week I've been covering all things to do with the lumbar spine. And which is why I thought Dr. Robinson would be an amazing addition to getting a different perspective from a medical field of how we treat the spine patients and how we guys can help you. So Dr. Robinson, Tell us a bit about how you help your patients with spinal conditions and your treatment approach. Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to educate them on why they're having that problem in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, many people come in, they're either having repetitive strain injuries or repetitive stress injuries from their work environment or from their um, active lifestyle. So the first thing we need to get them to understand is what's going on. And then from there, we take them through you know, our evaluations, orthopedic evaluations, and and this, the next step is to get them out of pain. So some of that treatment is along the same lines of, as physical therapy. It may be through modalities and muscle stimulation. We may do some uh, exercises. We may do um, muscle stimulation. Um, uh, anything that, any modalities that's gonna basically get rid of the pain first. And then once the pain is out, then we take them through uh, retraining 
steps to strengthen the muscles, to stabilize the muscles, and therefore to returning them back to um, normal active lifestyle that they normally have. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. And in terms of your specific treatment approach, do you have a different treatment approach than other chiropractors in your field? Do you have something specifically that, that um, differentiates you from your peers? Yes, there are a number of uh, techniques that a lot of chiropractors use. Um, my technique that I follow is called sacral occipital technique, which addresses a lot of muscle issues. Um, let's say, for instance, a patient comes in with um, acute low back pain. Um, the first thing that we would think is sciatica. We may think uh, disc injury, but in many cases, they may have a simple piriformis, um, active piriformis that we treat first. And you can treat that with you know, just modalities and muscle retraining. So you learn to treat the muscles first. And if the muscles are responding very well, then you don't have to go into a lot of the you know, traction uh, a lot of medication that they would normally have afterwards. Um, the the best way I can describe it is with re-education of the of the muscles and the fascia and the ligaments and tendons. We get probably eighty percent of the patients out of pain within two or three visits. So it is slightly different than most patients. Um, I've been in in one environment where you treat high volume patients, you typically go through, you know, 10, 15 minutes of treatment. But I've learned that if you spend enough time with them, you can reduce the number of visits that the patients have within three to five visits, sometimes 10 visits. Wow. Awesome. That's that's pretty remarkable. That's awesome. So, and, and I think that's also very interesting. And for a little bit of background um, for you guys that are listening, when I first met Dr. Robinson, the first thing that struck me about him specifically was his treatment technique and his and um the way that he approaches his patients. Um, many chiropractors that I had practiced with, um, that I'd previously interacted with before, were very much into doing the manipulations that I think you guys are very well known for in terms of going straight to some sort of manipulation of the lumbar spine or the of the neck or the back, depending on what the injury and what the issue was. And the one thing that really struck me was um how methodical his process, his thought process was in terms of working through from one layer all the way down and then doing what was necessary to get the patient better. And um, it actually mirrors a lot of the techniques that I use in my clinic in terms of approaching patients. Um, the only difference that I think that I have to you in terms of my treatment approach is that um, I, look at, I look at it from a biomechanical standpoint. So basically, I ask patients to give me a lot of information about how they are moving and the things that they're having problems with. And I deconstruct the motion that they're having problems with. I figure out the pain point. And let's say for a lower back patient, it may be that if they are a runner, if they're running for a long time, they usually get pain that maybe let's say one hour into their run versus, you know, right away, then we're talking about some sort of muscle endurance issue. And in that case, I peel apart their mechanics and figure out what's the muscle that's now not performing at the one hour mark. I work on that and then plug that into um, to their regiments and their running routine again so that they can run past that one hour mark. And um, again, I just think that it's so amazing to meet a chiropractor that has such a methodical um, approach in terms of getting pain symptoms down because a lot of, uh, I think a lot of clinicians go with one thing, fix everything, yeah? And we find, we find so often that, you know, there are multiple things that can be, you know, attributed to one pain point or to one issue with a patient. So it's really important to get a good clinical diagnosis to make sure that you're addressing that. So just like, as you said, if you figure out exactly what that is, you can get results within one to two visits and you can really get that person moving and get them back to their lives. So I think that's amazing. So um, let's, let's take that same person that you were talking about who were having the running issue. Um, the best thing, the best part of chiropractic that I know is that you don't have to be isolated to one area. Let's say, for instance, they came in and they had a, a hip issue. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the way it works with, with physical therapy is you're pretty much isolated to working. If you have a referral, you're isolated to working with that hip. I'm not sure if you can venture out into other areas. Mm -hmm. But with, with chiropractic, we tend to find that it may be a plantar fascia issue. It may be a, a knee issue. It may be that um, piriformis is overly tight or they may have uh, a tight QL hip flexor. So mm -hmm. the beauty about that is we can we can go along that entire track mm 
Mm-hmm. Uh, even phrase it to the point, but you know, they come in, they may say, it's a hip issue, it's a knee issue, but they're also having headaches. And you can kind of trace all of the muscle mm-hmm. muscles and the issues to certain points. So that's the beauty of working with muscles. And, it, and it's, it's pretty close to, I would say, as what physical therapy does. Yes, but but again, it all depends on the treatment approach. That's true. Yeah. Well, to answer your question about um, with physical therapy, if we're isolated to one um, location, the answer to that is it depends. It depends on the clinician, the training of the clinician, and it also depends on what um, setting they're working in. So I previously worked, as you said, like I worked in high volume settings where it was an insurance-based model. Um, you are limited for the most part. There's a lot of pressure for you to, if someone comes in with a knee, to just treat that joint. And if there's something else and you're really prompted to go back to the physician um, to get another referral, to maybe work on the hip if there's a, there's a resultant hip issue or there's a resultant foot issue. But in my clinic, because I don't work in that model, sure. I like yourself, which is why I thought it was interesting that we have such similar approaches, I am free to trace it all the way through. So if the knee problem is coming from a foot problem, we work there, we work on the problem. That's we work on the body part, which I right. think is so important because you know people come as one unit. You know, they don't come, you know, they don't, they're not able to shift their knee in, be fixed and then put it back on, you know, sew it back exactly. on the body. That's just not how it works. So it's really important to have a really holistic approach or global approach in terms of finding the diet, finding exactly what's causing the pain, fixing those things and then plugging it back into that patient so that they can be more functional. I think that's so important. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So another question for you. So when would you say, so... Again, interesting enough, you know, in terms of the way that we specifically practice, we are very similar. What would you say that, when would you say chiropractic care works best for your patients and under what circumstances? Hmm. That's kind of a hard question to ask um, because of the way that I treat. My (laughs) treatment is part chiropractic, part physical therapy, part, you know, rehabilitation, it's all mixed in one. Mm-hmm. I would say chiropractic works, works best when, um, with with a lot of manipulation of the spine, and especially mm-hmm. the lower back and the hips. I mm-hmm. find that lumbar spine, the pelvis, mm-hmm. um, when manipulated from a chronic or a long-standing injury, tends to have a great effect. Mm-hmm. Uh, I personally will do less manipulation in the cervical spine because it's a very sensitive area. Or if I do, it's a very gentle type um, type uh, manipulation. But I find that chiropractic is best when, you know, when you're working with the pelvis in the lumbar spine. Awesome, awesome. And in terms of your specific treatment atro- approach, do you have certain things that you always kind of share with your patients that are important in terms of your treatment of the lower back? I do, and it's usually eliminating habits that they have. I find that the pelvis, if we look at the pelvis as a box Mm -hmm. and the lumbar spine sitting on top of it as a pole that's going straight up and down, if that box becomes tilted from left to right, then the lumbar spine is gonna try to accommodate the change. So I try to get them to understand what they're doing um, that's creating that issue. Mm -hmm. Um, Home exercises, which, you know, Home exercises are only as good as the patients that will do them. So I try to incorporate a lot of that in the office. So giving them exercises at home to let them know that I want them to strengthen the area is key. So Mm -hmm. um, that's probably, you know, the best way I can describe what they would need. Got it. Awesome. And and I would agree with that. I think a lot of the work that I have done with my patients, specifically with low back pain, really centers on education. It really, it's important for them to understand how changing their mechanics or the mechanics that they had been doing is filtering into the problem that's causing their low back pain. So simple stuff as sitting in a chair, like right now I'm getting so many calls about, you know, Danelle, my neck is off. You know, I've been, you know, I've, since I've been home since COVID-19, my neck is crazy and my back is bothering me. And people are now home in situations where they don't have their usual office setup. That's correct. You know what I mean? So they're sitting in couches that are nice and slouched. They're sitting in chairs that are not supportive of the spine. And it's really illuminating for a lot of patients to realize, oh, the way I'm sitting is causing my pain. I don't have a bad back. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Exactly. And really, 
and really making them understand that there are certain habits that you may be doing every day that's filtering into what's causing your pain and getting them to understand the mechanics of it and being able for them to problem solve themselves. Because I always tell patients, I have one hour with you. <laughs> you can't take me home in your pocket. So I need you to understand these principles. Exactly. If you are put into a different situation, you can problem solve them yourself. You know, that's really, really important. That's so a great example that you use about the um, working from home. Mm -hmm. I, um, I instruct a lot of my patients to take pictures uh, of themselves from the front and from the side. Now, mm -hmm. I used to own an ergonomics company and I used to do ergonomics assess assessments yeah. for uh, companies. And so mm -hmm. I have them take pictures so that I can see how their office is set up at home mm -hmm. and instruct them on how to make changes. So that's another addition that I use with my patients. That's awesome, that's awesome. And in addition to that, and that's something that I similarly do, that the now exciting thing that I'm finding that's way more exciting for me, um, because people will always forget. They'll be like, oh, I forgot to take my picture. I'll take it next week, you know? Now you're in your home and I'm doing telehealth. Now I can see exactly everything. You can't get away, exactly. you know? So I can see all of the angles. I can see the way box that's under the chair, that shit, that's not allowing you to move it up and down and all of these, these funny things that are going on. On. So it's it's such a, a hidden blessing to be able to see patients in their home because now we can see all of the things exactly. that they may not have thought of that may be contributing to their pain that's now an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, specifically exactly. now that they're spending more time at home. That's awesome. So in your and I'm I'm giving you a couple more questions here. I, I'm, I, I know that you can you you're you're good with it. Um, what would you say is the most common diagnosis that you treat as a chiropractor? As a chiropractor, you're probably going to treat more lower back pain and headaches. Um, believe it or not, your chiropractors see a lot of headaches. Mm -hmm. So lower back pain, neck strain, and headaches are probably the most common. Now, in my practice, it can go from ankles to knees to hips to mm -hmm. lower back. Um, it goes pretty much across the board. Awesome. Awesome. And explain for those guys out there who may not be aware, how can chiropractor, because I do believe the um, general understanding of chiropractors for the spine. So are there other body parts that you treat and how does that factor into manipulations? How does that work? Well, there are other body parts that we treat. Um, mm -hmm. It may not be a, man a manipulation of the joint itself, but yes, we do learn manipulation of the ankles, um, you know, mm -hmm. knees, shoulders, and so forth. Um, there are many other body parts that are treated in chiropractic. And, and just about all chiropractors learn to do that. Mm -hmm. um, specifically for me, um, I treat more lower back and hip issues um, because, I'm, because of the work environment um, that where I am downtown, because a lot of people are in the office setting. So that's the bulk of my issues. Now, I also have a lot of runners who come in with ankle, ankle strains and um, knee strains. And I find that a lot of the knee issues may be related to a hip or maybe related to their foot or their ankle from their running posture. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and, and I feel like we can dive into that. I always call the knee as the... Um, the, the, the middle child. The middle child, exactly. <laughs> the middle child gets affected by what happens at the bottom, which is the foot, and it gets affected by what happens at the top, which is the hip. You know, there, there's so many issues that kind of really interlink with that. It's 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 so interesting. We can go down a whole rabbit hole with that in terms yeah. of talking about that. So another question for you, Dr. Robinson, in terms of if your ideal patient, if someone was to say, I'm looking for someone to help me how how would you what would you describe as your ideal patient like the person that would be best suited for you to help my ideal patient would be one that will listen and uh, do what is required for them to do in order to get better mm -hmm. uh, so, so you're really looking for someone who's really invested in getting better who's really exactly and so not not the people who want to come back and just get a massage Yes, no. He, no. no, you're really looking for the motivated patients. I'm looking for the motivated patients, which is why, mm -hmm. which is why I like working with athletes because mm -hmm. athletes wants to become want to become better. Yeah, um, they want to be stronger. They want to be faster. Mm -hmm. uh, and your typical person who wants, like you explained, I want a massage. I want to come back again, even though nothing's really hurting me. I want to just come back. Mm -hmm. I much rather 
you know, move on to someone who's motivated to improve um, their health. Awesome, awesome. So there, and we spoke about this a little while ago, but there are a lot of crossover and a lot of similarities between both of our practices. And I think that's not particularly common. I, I do think physical therapy is, a, is generally a very distinct entity from chiropractic in terms of the general sense. True. However, I think we are two very different clinicians <laughs> from our from our core expertise. So it's interesting how much we overlap in our treatment approach. So when would you say that someone should see you versus seeing me? What What's your thoughts on that in terms I, of chiropractic versus physical therapy? I tell patients, if you mm -hmm. are in acute pain and if it's something that when I assess it, mm -hmm. I find that it's something that I can treat mm -hmm. and get you out of pain. But when it terms when it comes to uh, rehabilitation, uh, let's say shoulders, knees, something that I typically don't do, I mm -hmm. I will refer to uh, physical therapy. Even mm -hmm. in if I think that they need about six weeks to six months of rehabilitation, that's something that we don't typically do in our office, and I always recommend physical therapy for that. Got it. Awesome. Awesome. So guys out there um, that are listening, and if you guys are out there listening and you have comments, please drop it in the comments. Type live if you're listening live. Replay if you are getting the replay of this. Um, so guys, in terms of really choosing a provider, I do think the overarching um, theme that we have between these two guys, these two people that you see here, is that you have to figure out the person that best matches with you and your approach. Okay, that's very important. But also you, I think it's very key that you get a very good diagnosis because the right. diagnosis again is very important in terms of the things that you're going to do in order to solve your pain. You can figure out things on your own on the internet, of course. You know, there's lots of information out there, which I love because I do think that it's important for patients to get a basic understanding of what their condition is because the more information you have, the more you're able to change it on your own. And the fact of the matter is we are not with you 24 seven. There needs to be some sort of understanding of what's going on for you to progress, but making sure that you have the clinician that can best get you a great diagnosis and targeted treatment in order for you to move from point A to point B is so key and is so important. And I think Dr. Robinson has amazing technical skills. I've seen him at work, guys. I went to his office and I shattered him for a little bit. He is amazing. So guys, make sure you reach out, call your providers. Um, if you are in the area, in the DMV area, call Dr. Robinson. He will be able to give you some good ideas about if you are the best patient for him, but make sure you want to get a quality diagnosis so that you're not wasting your time okay. and you're spending the right amount of time on getting a clear diagnosis and a clear solution for your pain, specifically when it comes to low back pain. Yeah. Anything to add, Dr. Robinson? Yes. One final thing I always say to my patient, it doesn't matter where you get better. It matters mm -hmm. that you get better. So yes. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's with me or with another provider. It's just mm -hmm. getting better. Yes. Awesome. And and I say the same thing. The goal, the goal is medical professionals. And I think something that again is in common with with the both of us is that, you know, there's so much there's, there's so much territory wars and people are saying, well, we should see only this person and we should see only this person. Guys, you want to get a team. There are things that Dr. Robinson can do that I cannot do. And there are things that I can do that Dr. Robinson cannot do. The key yeah. to get a team, a competent team, a quality team on your side so that you have all of your bases covered. We don't care who gets better, how you get better. We care that you get better. Exactly. Okay. That's so, that's so important. And I love that you share that with us. Anything else to add? This was so fun to, to catch up with you. Oh, no. Well, uh, one thing that, that I didn't say in the beginning is um, you say team. We, uh, we develop a team of physical therapists, um, uh, medical doctors of different um, perspectives um, mm -hmm. before, a dentist, uh, orthopedist. Uh, and we had a team before that we did the same thing that you're doing now. So my hat's off to you. I think that you, do, you have a great thing here that you need to let your followers know that as long as you have a good team of people, that mm -hmm. you can share with you know, share information that's actually going to benefit them, you know, all the more. Yeah, I, I I think it's so important, and I I truly believe in collaboration. And and the goal here, guys, you know, medicine can get very complicated and very technical, specifically in the U.S. There's so many different moving parts. It I I think almost it's 
it, it's dizzying how many specialties there are, how how crazy insurance companies can get, you know, and it's such a difficult place to navigate when you're a patient and you're in pain and you just want to feel better. So anything that I can do to help my patients make this process easier, I am all for. And and the very key part of that is understanding that I cannot be everywhere and do everything. So I want to get as many people on my team, competent people that know what they're doing, that are excellent clinicians, and that can move you forward on my team. And I encourage anyone that's listening out there, make sure that your physical therapist, if you don't have one, here I am. If you don't have a chiropractor, here is one. That's amazing. Make sure that your team is someone that you can communicate with, that you can listen to, and that is going to guide you appropriately. It's about getting that good team player on on your side to make sure that you can move forward. All right. Okay. I am going to briefly check. I, I don't think, I don't see any comments. I'm trying to check on my phone where there's no feedback. I don't see anything. This is the thing about Facebook. It's so busy these days. But Dr. Robinson, thank you so, so, thank so much for having me. This was awesome. Guys, okay. check the replay. Check this guy out. He is actually less than a block away from my office downtown DC. If you are in the DMV area, check him out. He is amazing. I don't say that lightly. If you guys know me, you know I'm honest. and I don't hold back. He is actually very amazing. So thank, thank you so you. much for joining us today. And um, guys, we will catch up tomorrow. I'll be back with um, another episode of Ask Dr. D tomorrow. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye.